Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to witness the death of my originality. Hey guys, it's Julia. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be obviously, first of all, a joke. <laughs> I want to do a Valentine's Day look this year that's a little bit on the kind of like sultry, kind of softish glam side on the eyes and then very vampy on the lips. And then inspiration struck me. I was scrolling through Sarah Chung's channel. Um, she does some of the funniest like joke tutorials where it's like, I'll just, I'll just flash it on screen. Um, she makes me die laughing. So I wanted to do a tutorial called um, My Sugar Daddy's Funeral. Obviously, I just wanna preface this by saying the obvious disclaimer. No, I do not have a sugar daddy. I don't have a sugar daddy. Um, Never had. I've never had a sugar daddy. If I wanted one, yes, I could probably get one because I am what? I wanted a sugar daddy, yes, I probably could go out and get one because I am what? Sickening. Sickening. But just a really romantic, kind of on the red-toned cranberry side of things, Valentine's Day look. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. And I didn't do any Valentine's Day tutorials last year, so today we are remedying that. I hope you guys enjoyed the very very extra intro. In the arms of the and, um, without further ado, let's get right into it. I have a lot of fun new products to test out for you guys on my face and um, yeah, let's do this. I was gonna wait to film this video until my skin was completely clear, but then I realized that's probably never gonna happen. So um, just bear with this, just bear with this. I know a lot of people have been just saying like, hey, it's fine, just show your skin texture on camera. Um, we don't care. And I care personally, but I think it's really nice to have an audience that's accepting of my skin struggles because I don't have a smoothing filter on my camera. I don't have perfect skin by any means. Just being real here. <laughs> Eagle Starting off with primer, I'm gonna use the Farsali Skin Tune Blur Primer with the Becca First Light Priming Filter. Obviously, you do not have to use two different primers, but I love the effect that this one gives in just like smoothing everything out. And then the Becca First Light Priming Filter just makes my skin super dewy. You know I'm into that. And then with the Becca one, I'm just gonna squirt like about a pump onto my hand. By the way, today I am wearing my extensions. These are from Irresistible Me. I've talked about them in, I think I did a full IGTV video actually talking about my extensions. Personally, I've owned multiple sets of extensions. These are my favorites just because I feel like they hold like heat styling the best. I've tried Bellamy extensions before and those I would curl in the morning and they would just be like flat at the end of the day, which is what my natural hair does. So I want my extensions to be able to hold that style and these I feel like really do that. But yeah, I actually got my hair cut um, in December and for the first time ever, I actually didn't hate my haircut. I feel really good about it. And then when I actually get the length off, I'm like, oh my God, I miss my long hair. But this time I'm just really liking my shorter hair. But every now and then when I do want that full flippable texture, the extensions go in. And then because we are going for that glowy skin look, I'm gonna add on Cool, dropped it. I'm gonna add on some AOA Studio Glow Baby Illuminating Drops. I do not like these as a highlighter on their own, but I've been using these under my foundation on top of my primer lately, um, just like on the high points of my face to give me some illumination. And I got some in my hair. That's what she said. <laughs> but I really like like layering glow products. So putting like a cream glow underneath my powder. I just think it gives the glow more dimension to your face. So um, today I'm going for a very dewy skin, healthy, still alive while my sugar daddy is not <laughs> look. And then for foundation today, I don't really have anything super new. So I'm just gonna use the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. This is my favorite drugstore foundation. I think it's $13 or $10. And to blend it in, I'm going to use the new AOA Studio Microfiber Sponge. This one is the sculpted version. I used the teardrop one in my last Get Ready With Me. But basically it's that same like velvet texture sponge that's been going around and been very, very hyped up. So I just squirted some of my foundation out and let's apply it mostly on my forehead where I need it. Basically the deal with the microfiber sponge is that it's supposed to like have little mini like velvet hairs, like a velvet texture would, and just be able to like disperse more coverage evenly. So I've definitely noticed that when using this one. I think you can see how, I use like one pump of that Catrice foundation. I think it's really just like covering up a crap ton, um, which is good today. So far though, in using this, the only drawback I'd find is that it's very, very hard to clean um, just because it is velvet. I find it's a lot harder to clean than your regular beauty blender. So there's that. I think for $1.55, it's a cool thing to try out. So I really like it so far. I still think I like the regular Wonder Blender a little bit better, just like the regular foam one, but this is nice. <laughs> I like how that canceled out pretty much all the colonies up here on my forehead. Let's continue. Real quick, I'm just gonna wipe off all the foundation. 
on my lips. I think for a really long time, I got into that whole thing of like, putting foundation onto your lips and just leaving it there. I think that was something Nikki Tutorials used to recommend because it like smoothed out the base of your lips, but um, I've realized that I hate it. Uh, so you guys have to let me know, do you guys like leave your foundation on your lips or do you wipe it off? Because for me, um, it just looks so nasty that I have to wipe it off, otherwise it looks like crack. Now for concealer, I'm gonna use the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Concealer in 130. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Pro Filter Foundation, but I've been hearing a lot of good things about this one, mostly because influencers are doing reviews of it and may or may not be sponsored, but I wanted to try it out for myself. So I got the shade 130. I wear 140 in the foundation, but I wanted to go one shade lighter for my concealer. And today's not a first impression of this. I have been using this concealer, still developing my full thoughts on it. So far, what I've noticed with this concealer is, um, if you didn't like the fact that the Pro Filter Foundation like literally dried in 30 seconds, um, I think you won't have that kind of problem with this concealer. I felt like Pro Filter Foundation had to immediately like blend it out when you put it on just because it dri dried down so quickly on your face. Whereas with this one, you have a little bit more like wiggle time to blend it out and you don't have to be like, but it is looking a little bit drier on my under eyes than I normally like. So I have been only using it with a sponge. I definitely wouldn't recommend using it with a brush. I do love doing my concealer with a brush, but for drier concealers like this, sponge is definitely the way to go. And then sometimes one of my favorite tricks that probably is a little bit more taboo in the beauty community is if my concealer is having a little bit of harder time blending out in the very inner corner where I can't get my sponge in there, take what God gave you. Sometimes blending out with my concealer with my fingers is actually really good just because your fingers have like natural heat to them and a little bit of natural oil. So they just help the concealer mesh in a little bit better. And yes, it feels like finger painting, but it's actually a really good tool. So I feel like people forget all the time that like they have fingers to use with their makeup. makeup. Yeah, no one forgets that they have fingers, but you know what I mean? People like forget that they can use their fingers as beauty tools. So sometimes if my concealer is a little bit harder to get in the inner corner, especially if I'm using a sponge that doesn't have like a point to it, I will just go ahead and go in with my finger and tap whatever's left in there. Dark circles. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. I feel like that gave my under eyes a really nice brightening effect and oh, holy. Oh, it looks so nice in the viewfinder. I don't know if it actually looks nice on camera. We'll see when I'm editing. Eh. Now I'm going to set my under eyes with a very, very light dusting of Laura Mercier translucent powder. I haven't been using powder very often this winter just because um, my skin's so dry right now. But setting my under eyes, especially with this concealer, is a must. So I'm just gonna do a very light dusting of the translucent matte. Translucent matte and translucent glow have very similar packaging, which is very bad because one time I picked this up to set my face and I looked like a disco ball for the rest of the day. So I really wish they'd done something different with the packaging. That's another gripe I have with this product. But So I'm just gonna take a very like soft pointed powder brush. This is the AOA Studio EF25 from the Foam Mint Collection. You can see there's a little bit of powder in here. I'm just gonna lightly press it in just about this much powder and just lightly graze it on the under eyes. We're not doing heavy setting at all. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. I'm liking how the base is looking so far, except for that. Now for contour, I'm gonna use my Anastasia Cream Contour Stick in the shade Mink. This is probably one of the darker, I keep dropping everything. This is one of the darker contours I own that still works on my skin tone, so. For this look, obviously I am going for Sugar Daddy's Funeral, which is gonna be a full beat, full face of makeup. And I hate these foundation sticks as like, you know, foundation, but as contours, they're actually really good because they're such a stiff product that of course they're gonna suck as foundation because they're super hard to blend out. But that's good for contour because if your contour is really, really like easy and oily and emollient to blend, it's gonna look like a mess. <laughs> By the way, the mirror in this Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb highlighter the best. It is one of the clearest mirrors I've ever owned in this type of compact, so I've been using it for pretty much every tutorial lately. My favorite thing to do, honestly, with my cream contour is just to take whatever's left of my foundation and just lightly tap on top of it, but especially because this is a very dark contour on my face, it's going to just kind of make it look like a very nice, natural, but still deep shadow. Update on the whole nose contour situation slash journey slash 
um, acid trip. I think I have finally like gotten down like what my actual nose shape is. For a while there, I was really trying to contour exactly like James Charles, which was not working out for me because obviously James and I do not have the same nose. <laughs> I think I've gotten my contouring down to a place where I like it from the front. I still do not like my own nose shape from the side. So. And I've been pretty open about the fact that I have very much been considering being rhinoplasty because this is obviously one of my biggest insecurities. But through nose contouring, I've learned to be able to embrace it a little bit more. I'm not saying I will never ever get my nose done in the future. And honestly, I think shaming someone for getting their nose done is the most disgusting thing you can do. But I have been learning and trying to perfect this rather than just giving up. And it is one of my weaker points in makeup, the nose contour, but I think I've really gotten the hang of it in the past couple months. So for those of you who have been here since the beginning, has my nose contour gotten better? <laughs> Please say yes. Girl, look how orange you look, girl. I am so obsessed with how the base is looking so far. I think we look very chiseled, but also in a nice natural way. If it was like a very no makeup makeup day, I could just pop on some mascara, um, do some like very light lip tint, and then just be out of here. Today is not a natural makeup day. I'm actually gonna continue on and do a mostly cream product base. So I think the general connotation with like cream contour, cream bronzer, cream blush has been just like more natural makeup days, but I actually love doing cream products for a more full beat like today, especially with my favorite, the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer in the shade Baked. I think this bronzer is an absolutely beautiful color and the way it blends into the skin makes it perfect for literally anything. And now let us blend. Would you look at how that blended? No. I think it's also been like a hot minute since I've used that bronzer on my channel, but I talk about it so often that like, I felt like I should probably show how it looks on the face. And this is just like legit, probably my second favorite bronzer in my collection behind the Marc Jacobs one. I have never been a huge cream blush person, honestly. I started using cream blush in, I wanna say like November or December of last year. So, so it hasn't really been the longest journey for me, but I've fallen so in love with how green blush looks, especially if it's like, a good formula. Lately, I've been really liking the AOA Hush Cream Blushes. These are kind of like a sheer tint, and what I like to do is I just take my finger, um, get that color. This one is the shade Shy. It's a nice, deep burgundy red. And then take whatever's on my finger, and I'm just depositing it right here to get that initial color onto my cheeks. And I like taking whatever's left on my finger and just tinting my lips a little bit so I look prettier while I do my makeup. Also, as you can see, that gave my lips a nice tint, so you can kind of do the Korean lip with this type of product. It's kind of like the Bite Multi Sticks, that drier texture that's gonna stay stiff for a while. And then I'm taking just like a nice stippling, a little bit of a more firm brush. This is the Focalore, I don't know. Stippling it on there, mostly focusing it in right here on the apples, but then bringing it upwards into where we put the bronzer. And I, but also because it's such a bright color, especially on my skin tone, um, it looks beautiful. Obviously, I've only set my under eyes thus far, so I wanted to go into the very light dusting of glowy powder, so I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier Translucent Glow Setting Powder. And this, as I've used it more often, I've realized that sometimes it looks really good on me, sometimes it looks fucking awful. So I'm just going to take the glow powder brush, I really like this one, and just focus most of it on the cheekbones, and then whatever's left, just graze the forehead. And I hope you guys can see it in the viewfinder, but I think it just adds a little bit extra dimension to the face that we lost from adding on a matte foundation. Continuing on, I'm gonna do highlighter and then I'll move on to eyes. So for highlighter, I'm using the New Deck of Scarlet Edition number 12 palette. This is in collaboration with Lupe Cuevas, I think. It's a beautiful, beautiful Instagrammer. I love her work. She does the most beautiful, amazing eye looks. Um, one of my favorite Instagram accounts. So I was super excited to get this one and support her. She had crystallized. I'm gonna go into my Morphe. Uh, great question, I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. It's a little bit subtler than I'd normally like. I feel like I'm having to build it up to get anywhere. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this one. Normally the highlighters in the Deco Scarlet palettes are very blinding and bright and this one's just not really doing that much for me. You know what, just to show you guys, I'm gonna use the ColourPop Flexitarian Super Shock Cheek Highlighter just so you can see the difference. So I'm gonna kick that off and then go onto this cheek. See, so this is like an instant blinding glow, whereas this, a little bit subtler, not really what I'm going for today. This ColourPop highlighter is honestly the ultimate like wet looking highlighter for me. I just love this one. I take it right up here to the brow bone 
and then just graze it back down again. You know, I wanna top off that highlighter with a bit of Fenty Diamond Balm, um, just because I've been using it as a mirror the whole time. And this is like one of the most extra like glittery highlighters I have. So I'm um, just gonna go in with a little, by the way, I'm really into glowy skin. <laughs> cool, I just realized I've neglected to do my brows the whole time and I will do them on camera this time. Today I'm going to use the Moira Eyebrow Gel in the shade Deep Ebony. Um, I've been using these for a bit now in place of my Anastasia Dip Brow and I actually high key really like this. I feel like it's the most pigmented brow product I've ever used. Very similar actually to the Kat Von D brow pomade so if you're wanting a good dupe for that this could be your girl. But with this it, there's like no way to not get the Instagram insane brow so if you're more wanting a more like wispy natural brow this is not going to be the pomade for you i think dip brow can create both whereas this is definitely for that nice sculpted out super super stay in place instagram brow okay brows are on i kind of look like james charles circa 2016. <laughs> It's time for eyeshadow, so I'm going to prime my eyes, as always, with the P. Louise base in Rumor 05. And again, I know the whole thing with the P. Louise base is that you're supposed to take a brush and just do the patting motion, but I do not have 20 minutes to spend patting out my eyelid primer with a brush, so I'm using my fingers once again. Really good way to get this base really easily spread out. Also, you can use a sponge, very easy way as well. All right, so for today's eye look, I'm gonna be using the Coastal Scents Revealed Palette. I've had a lot of requests to try out Coastal Scents, and they are a more affordable eyeshadow brand. They have really, really cheap singles, kind of like a cult favorite brand for eyeshadows, and I've had a lot of requests to try them out. So I was extremely excited when they reached out to me and asked me to try out their new palette that is just being released on the 5th of February. This is the Revealed Rouge Palette, and first of all, I just wanna say, I never thought I would get to a point where any brand, especially a brand like Coastal Scents, would even like, acknowledge my existence. <laughs> Every time I get the opportunity to work with a brand that I really love, I really love what they're doing and I'm just very passionate about, I get so freaking excited. And Robbie the Christie recently did a video talking about like sponsorships and how in the beauty community, it seems that sponsorships are really looked down upon. Whereas in other communities here on YouTube, it, it's just kind of like a normal thing. So I just wanted to say, first of all, I'm very thankful to have a base of subscribers that lets me do sponsorships and doesn't get like mad at me or think of me as a sellout for doing them, um, which I've seen in a lot of other people's comment sections. So I'm very grateful that I don't have a lot of that here. <laughs> so whenever I do a sponsorship, which is not very often, I've only done them with like Poshmark and Shop Tiger, which are brands I really, really feel passionately about. I wanna make sure that it's always with a brand that I really like and I genuinely feel that way about. So also I always try to make it clear to brands that I am not gonna mince my words for them. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a very unfiltered review of the new Revealed Rouge palette. Obviously it's a pretty like neutral palette with a twist of like warm tones and reds. Kind of looks like the Naked Heat palette, honestly. Love this as a neutral palette. I want to use it to create today's look. I want to thank Coastal Sense for partnering with me on this part of the video. Starting off, I'm gonna reach into this shade here called Perfection. It's kind of like a mauve pink tone using my AOA Studio E126. This is just gonna make a really nice soft transition in the crease. I really like so far how these ones blend out. Honestly though, they are not the most pigmented shadows. Sometimes in a neutral palette, I do prefer just cause I like being able to build up my shadows. So with these ones, I do feel like you have to layer them like maybe two to three times to get to the full color that's in the pan. Um, but they do blend out pretty easily. So that's a problem I normally have with more affordable formulas is that they don't really like layer well, I guess. You can't really layer them that well to create a nice look that doesn't get muddy. These so far, I feel like they blend out really nicely, but just keep in mind that you will have to work with these a little bit more because these are not like Anastasia level of pigmentation. They're probably... Now I'm gonna go into this kind of burgundy reddish shade here called Raspberry. Again, it's another matte shade. I do love the fact that there is a nice array of mattes in here. Normally, I usually find that there's like not enough depth in here, but I feel like there's a good amount of like mid-tone mattes, very light transition shades, and then very dark ones as well. So, so with this Raspberry shade, I'm again just kind of deepening up the crease, creating a nice kind of pinky flush in there. You know what, I actually kind of feel like this palette color scheme is like the Naked Heat and the Naked Cherry in one palette. I know that in my last two get ready with me's, I kind of forgot to do the whole like zooming in so you could see what I was doing thing. So I'm trying to get better about doing that on camera. So today I'm doing my best to do that. Next, I'm gonna go into the shade here called Crave. Again, this is kind of a deeper version of the shade Raspberry. It's a little bit of a darker burgundy. Also one of the more pigmented shades in the palette. So I feel like the deeper mattes 
actually have a little bit more pigment in them. All right, so I'm mostly just focusing Crave on the outer edge and then I'm just bringing it slowly in. I feel like especially with the Instagram makeup that I normally do, Valentine's looks for me mean like bright fluorescent pink and that's not really a thing that everyone wants to do. So I wanted to do kind of a reddish inspired Valentine's look that's still red, but it's not necessarily like red. Finally, I'm gonna finish off with Night Brush. Really a weird color. It's kind of in between brown and red. Kind of like a coffee brown with a little bit of red to it. I really like it. First, I'm gonna go into this kind of pink tone shade here called Red Delight. It's not red. The shimmers in this palette for me are not the best shimmer formula I've ever used. Honestly, I do like some other affordable brands. Shimmer for me is a bit more. ColourPop is my personal favorite. Um, these ones, I would say you definitely do need to work with a wet brush, and then I would actually recommend doing this and just going in with a finger afterwards to just kind of top it off what you're doing. As mentioned, I'm gonna go into the shade here called Delish and pat that right next to it, but we're just kind of doing a fade with the different shimmer shades. So these are not gonna be like super, super glittery and blingy like some other shimmer formulas are, like Anastasia. They are extremely malleable, so I feel like you can work with them and get them to that point. Just gonna finish off with a shade here called Sacred. Now I'm just gonna buff out the lower, going back into the shade here called Crave. You know what, I feel like Crave is actually the best shade in the palette. Going to the shade Raspberry as well. And then finally finishing back off with Perfection. I have a date picking me up for coffee in about 10 minutes, so let's rush this. Mascara, I don't really have anything new ever, so I'm just gonna use the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. Y'all know the drill. This is good kush. All right, now for lashes. I'm super excited about this. AOA Studio, Shot Mose, came out with a bunch of foam ink lashes. These are, I think, $1.55 per pair. I have the entire collection they sent me. It was the most amazing PR package to receive, honestly. I'm gonna use the Style Gaia today because they are the ones that I have pre-trimmed and I have five minutes. For lips, I'm gonna first start off with the ColourPop lip liner in the shade Dukes. Oh, they're texting me that they're on the way, okay. And then I'm going to fill that in with the Il Maquillage Infinity Longwear Matte Lip Cream. By the way, this shade is matte danger. I completely forgot to say that. I'm so sorry. All right, so this is the completed look of me going to my sugar daddy's funeral. I don't have a sugar daddy. I never had a sugar daddy. I will film the intro and the outro later because right now I, I got somewhere to be. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, <laughs> if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed down below and also follow me on Instagram to see makeup looks like this and other things posted semi-regularly. And um, if you made it to the very end of this video, I love you. Bye. I'm so sorry. What? Just kidding. I got it. Bloop. <laughs>